We are all here at the Grand Palm Hotel in Gaborones in Botswana for the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, which is round for the South African Off-Road Championships for cars, motorcycles and quads. There are 180 competitors gathered here for the race run over two days, and one of the main supporters of off-road racing in South Africa is, of course, Toyota. Toyota is the largest seller of uh, 4x4s in the South African market, and this is our way of putting something back into the sport. The first section of the route changed completely since last year. We have tried to make it a lot more spectator friendly than what it was in the past. In the past the competitors could not really get to the route and they could never get to the road crossings. Whereas this year there is quite several places where the supporters will be able to see their vehicles and their, their cars. Friday afternoon is for scrutineering and to put on the official livery and then they all go into impound for the night. Nice to have Hubert Oriel, the organiser and twice a winner of the Perry Dakar Rally, out here for the Toyota 1000. Well, I think you have very good drivers, uh, especially, you know, I, I have the experience of Alfie Cox. You know, I saw him uh, under race and I think he could be one of the next uh, winner of the Paris Dakar Rally because he has a big experience of off-road racing. He now has a big knowledge of the race, big experience. He's a very fast and tough rider. We saw it with his problem of his arm this year. But it's not the only one, and I'm sure definitely you have uh, maybe 10 drivers who could be in the top 10, you know, uh, of a race. And uh, that's why uh, I'd like to try to take them coming to our races, uh, because uh, the Dakar is uh, somewhere one of the huge, you know, off-road race, and uh, takes place in, in January across all Africa, North Africa. But it's kind of a mythic race, and uh, I think it uh, should be a dream for drivers to do it once. So that's why we try to see, uh, to come here to kind of try to arrange things so they, they can come and race in, Af in North Africa. Everyone gets tucked away for the night, waiting for the early start for the toughest of all off-road races in this country. Just before 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, the cars all lined up and ready to go. Not too popular was the draw for starting positions in each category. And first away for the 1,000 kilometre haul is the Castrol Jimco, Greg Harvey and Boyd Stone, the 98 champions in this class. They come from the Eastern Province. Straight away they're going to a special stage. Lots of people out early this morning to see the excitement of this Toyota 1000. These two have also raced in the States. From a motorsport family is Neil Woolridge, who's with Paul for Mark and the Reptile Gel Pajera, which they raced in the Granada Dakar Rally this year. Yeah, it is the big one of the year. It's the one that everyone looks forward to. Uh, it's one that hasn't been that fantastic for us. Uh, I've only won it once before in 1996 in the Nissan. Um, and last year we had an engine problem, so we didn't make it here. So yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It's two days, a uh, thousand kilometers, which is really going to be long and hard. I think the secret of this race is to get to the overnight stop with the car in a good, strong uh, condition and yourself in a good condition and then push hard on the, on the way back on Sunday. It's very dusty, the dust hangs, there's no wind as uh, so early in the morning so it's, it's quite difficult to keep track you know and it, it tends to be very tight in the beginning amongst all of the population here yeah. and uh, yeah that's about once you get out in, in the open it starts becoming easier to, to do the job that I've got to do. One of the favourites this year for an overall win is the father and son combination of France Senior and Junior, the Chepix and the Flat 6 Porsche engine race car. Uh, you know, we've won this event for the last two years in a row, and uh, you know, to win again would be fantastic, a hat trick would be really, really welcome. Although there's a lot of competition out there, you know, everybody wants to win this race, everybody wants to win the race. There's 80 competitors here today, so there's going to be one hell of a lot of competition. And Our strategy is basically going to be to take it easy in the beginning. It's a long race, it's a thousand Ks and um, we want to be there at the finish so we're going to take a nice steady pace to keep on the pace but um, not go too mad these two share their driving on a porsche specialist in Gauteng. right the next one is newton love and colin pote in the quickfoot race coat they've done very well this year second in the class in luchtenberg and barbers pan and fifth overall at barbers pan and here's action cliffy barker and malcolm jubey in the land rover it's a land rover 110 110 fitted with an m3 bmw engine known as mr nice guy cliff has had problems early in the season, but is now up and racing with Rob Green Motors. And he's been in Land Rover since 1994, knows a thing or two about them, also has won the roof in one of these. Another mighty machine in South African off-road racing, the Castrol Toyota 4.5 litre Land Cruiser, fitted with Yokohama tires and driven by a five times winner. Yeah, we have al 12 keer the desert race. We have it 10 keer klaar en ons het vijf keer gewen. De ander goeie tweede plekke en ek denk een of twee derde plekke gehad. So, 
in die verleden was hij deze nog een van ons schinstelling bijeenkomsten. En ons denk nog steeds, dat is een van die lekkere bijeenkomsten om te doen op die kalender. The Birkin brothers are next, Andrew and Chris in the Castle Toyota. They won in their class for production vehicles in the first two events this year. They've had a few problems with their transmission, but are meaning to finish and get points. Uh, the desert race is very hard. Um, I think we're going to have a problem today. We worked in the vehicle until 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, we still have a diff problem. Uh, we haven't managed to solve it. Uh, we're going to run in two-wheel drive, and when we need to, we'll put into four-wheel drive. Our objective at this stage is just to finish. Uh, I think, unfortunately, a good position is out the window for us before the start. Second day, which is basically the way home, is, is far, far tougher than the, the way out there. Here's another pair of action men, Shamir Vario, are now counting base, but in a Botswana registered vehicle, with experienced Bix Carolyn doing the navigating in the Chenith. Have a great following of fans. And this is what the court tough course looks like as competitors go out into the back and beyond. It's dusty, it's rough, it's stony, it's an absolute car breaker. They're first going to travel southwest of Cabaron and then head off northwest for the start of the 250 kilometer loop. And in a single seater, the mighty mag, Marius Bahrain, in a car that is always competitive. Tom Smith hasn't been beaten this year in the Pomona Porsche Mighty Mag and could be in for another win. It's just a hell of a long race. All I want to do is try and get to the end. The first 60 k is apparently very hard and rocky, so I just want to get through that and don't get stuck in the sand and just keep it going, you know? Here's that big Castle Toyota hard at work, Rainer and Houghton doing the uh, navigating, and you can just see the importance of the navigator trying to find those markers in the dust. This dust is just hovering over this uh, felt as they wrestle that big power machine. So easy to wrong slot in one of these. And listen to the sound of that racing Porsche engine. Just going along at 8,000 uh, RPM. It's going to be doing that for 1,000 kilometers. And you can see the dust is so thick this early in the morning. And the draw for starting position is certainly not going to go down well with the Chepix. This combination hasn't been beaten this year so far. Totally standard Castro Toyota rallying an off-road legend. Kasi could see with Pete Swanepoel as his navigator. We're positive, positive about it. There's a race of 1,000 kilometers. And there's no strategy. We can uh, approach it, you know, and make a decision if we come to obstacle. Uh, we haven't got, haven't got a good starting position, but never mind. So the dust is the main problem today. And we're going to just keep tracking. At our halfway mark, we decide faster or slower. What's the problem? And Cassie can certainly keep on trucking. From Botswana, Shumi van Fier and Fani Kotsa. They've been a very successful team in off-road racing. Can always expect lots of action from them. And here we are out in the course. It looks like the scene from the film, The Gods Must Be Crazy. It's Greg Harvey, Boy Stone. They started first. They don't have the dust problem but they've got to act as pathfinders to find the route and it's so easy to get lost in these conditions. Second on the road, here comes Neil Woolridge and Paul Favark. Woolridge, of course, raced motorcycles, went in the uh, Welsh International on two-wheelers, and the Chepix. You can see that it's so difficult to see in this dust, and that light at the back, of course, is for identification that the other competitors can see you. Newton, Love and Colin Poth underway, but having too many problems with the dust, it seems to settle as the three leaders are tending to get away from the others. Our vehicle stands a sort of treatment over a thousand kilometers beyond me. Cliffy uh, Barker and uh, Martin Jonker going flat out there in the Land uh, Rover. Here's R.P. Reinecke, Robin uh, Houghton. Big dust problem here. Oh, which way do we go here? Have to stop and wait. It's like a mist hanging over the felt there. But they enjoy this as their success has approved. Right down to the riverbeds. Bevan Berta on the Jack's Paint and Hardware single seater attacks the section with ease. It's a rear wheel drive, very light in the front. Just pops his wheel over the bank and on his way. Here are the leaders once again, they don't have, as we say, don't have the dust, dust problem. Here's a ooh, the wrong slot here. Easy to get caught out here. So easy. No tracks to follow. And the road ahead could go anywhere here. And of course, off-road races are won and lost in sections like this. I think we'll try this route. Here we go across the felt. This is going to open up for the others. They can follow their track. But this section is sure to cut, uh, catch out a lot of the other competitors. And their lead is being reduced. They started half a minute ahead of the next competitor. The others will be starting to come along now. And as they go here very, very quickly, they're crossing the Gabaron Moli Paloli Road. The suspension, just look at it working away there. It's rear wheel drive and it's just all suspension and shock absorbers. And those drivers and navigators sitting in relative comfort. Right, flying along here. Neil Woolridge, it's now right hand drive. They used to race with air conditioning, electric windows. They've taken those out in the interest of lightness. And here they are, the Chepix. Haven't caught up to Woolridge yet, but are going very well. Still that dust, they haven't got a windscreen there. But they have a lot of ventilation going into their helmets. Cliffy Bark and Jebet, still spectacular. We're now southwest of Gaborone, soon to turn north across the Tamaga Road. Here's off again, sixth at the moment. 
Also just holding station this first 250 kilometer section. And Bevan Bertal, always on a charge, absolutely flat out. Here's Cliff Barker now, trying to come out the riverbed. Oh, get stuck. Four-wheel drive. Can't do the power of that engine's all at the top. And Bevan Bertal arrives in the Jacks Payton Hardware uh, race car. He wants to get past there very quickly. Cliffy Sporting, he just moves out of the way, just needs a run at that hill. But uh, that M3 engine is that BMW engine's got all the power at the top, not that slug, sloggy power down the bottom. Two-wheel drive, whoops, nearly pops it over backwards and on his way. Bevan Bertold, a motocrosser, a Group N racer as well. And here comes Arpy. He's now moved up a position. He's moved up on the road to fifth position ahead of Cliff Bach and it just goes up there so easy. And this group of drivers have broken away from the rest of the field. This is what it looks like. Here we are with uh, the Pajero going very quickly. It's a sandy section from Gaborone going northwest up to the, uh, the loop at the top of this one, 250 k's away. You can see that's a four-wheel drive. It's battling with the sand. And here you can see the two-wheel drive. The Birkins have had that trouble getting through, trying to find a, a hard patch as they come through there. It's very, very deep sand. A normal 4x4 would just get stuck in here and would hardly be able to make its way forward. They found a soft patch here. They're following a couple of tracks. Castle Toyota's almost in fest as they are the favourites in this E1 class. They lead the championship at the moment back into that thick sand. And here's the second man on the road. It's Woolridge and it's for Mark. And have a look behind. Still in the dust, but he's caught up that gap. Just holding station. Doesn't want to take any chances, Franti Chepik, as they're going to that thick uh, dust of that river. But it's very thick. Chepik's holding back. They're covered in dust at the moment. But breathing easily. They've got an air system going into the helmet. See the difference there between four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive as they go along that riverbed. It's such thick sand along there. And that Porsche engine still sounding like tearing calico. We're about 120 kilometers into this race at the moment. There's a vehicle that started first uh, early this morning. Now lying in third position, battling in the sand. Bevan Bertal, he's got his own route across, at the, uh, across the uh, felt at the spectator stage. Arpi Ranica, there he comes. He takes the more conventional route, and you can see the spectator starting to line the route right along here where the uh, track actually crosses the main road. And that big four and a half leader, you can hear it, it's battling along in that thick sand. It is so thick, it is so dusty. Cliffy Barker as well. Got to keep that BMW, that M3 engine revving. Sounding good now. He had problems in the early start of the season with gearbox and touch problems. Probably too much power going to the gearbox, but it's sounding good now. It's really slogging away. Hein Trobler, Charles Volmont in the gearbox services Toyota. They come from Clarkstorp. Hello, which way do we go? Oh, crowds say you're going the wrong way. They can't hear them in there and he's navigating saying, I wonder which way do we go now? Which way did those tracks go? Let's go back and have another try. Now you're looking at spectators. They always seem to go to the places where the competitors have trouble. Well, it's somewhere around here. We've got to find our way out of here. There's that 4x4 four four bounces its way across the felt. Right, let's have another go. We'll go up there and we'll see if this is the right track. And in the meantime, here come the Birkins. And that's going to get him into the lead in that class. That's the standard production class. Here comes an only two-wheel drive. And that back, those back tires, those Yokohama tires are spinning away. And get them to the top. This is the way to go. His navigator seems to say, yes, let's go. So, Andrew Birkin's taking the right way. And uh, right on their tails. <laughs> there they are. There's uh, Hein Krobler and Charles Rollman getting the route set for them. Another spectacular vehicle. Left-hand drive. It's Shamir Variawa. Bix Carolyn taking their time through. They've got narrow tyres in the others. But look at all that suspension. They're in relative comfort going along there. We're now going uh, northwest of Cabarones. That's uh, Newton Love and Colin Poten, the race car from the eastern province. That, oh, they're just, the tyres are fighting for grip on that deep sand. Of course, down there, they're the uh, eastern province champions. Second in Luchtenburg and in Barberspan and uh, are a very, very good team. If you've ever seen shocks, have a look at the back of that one. There's three shocks alone on the back of each side of that vehicle. As that motor just tears along, they've got some speed now to fight it through the sand. But that's going to be a difficult one for the motorcycles. They've got to find some hard ground uh, when we next see them in the next program. Now we're into the bush. We're out of the deep sand. We're going out of Gaborones, heading north. Across the main road there. This is Woolridge. Second overall, leading their class. This vehicle has hardly missed a beat since it came back here racing. The Repro Joel Pajera looking good, sounding good, comfortable way to the off-road racing. A very talented team uh, are the crew there. The Chepics. Still second overall. Haven't passed Woolridge yet. Second, but he's first in his class in the special vehicles. He hasn't uh, thought of passing quite yet. As Arby Ranica comes through, he's lying fourth. And here's the Chepics on, on the roll. One of the most successful teams. Funny enough, father and son both got their national colours in the same year. 
They were way back in 1970, one of the pioneers of off-road racing, and that is one very sorted out race car. The Land Rover, Cliffy Barker, Martin uh, Joubert. You can see the marker up in the tree there, that red marker tells him to turn left. And Greg Harvey and uh, Boy Stone, fifth at the moment behind RP and Cliff. Stop at the main road, there's the Gaborones Road. Marshall, you've got to stop here. And then you back into the bush, and it is thick bush, and so easy to get lost there. There's a lot of tracks in this bush. Back in the field, because you could see Pete Swanapool second in their class to the Birkins, who have only got that two-wheel drive to say. And then the Continental tyre shot, Shumi Fun, Nafira and Fani Kotsa, the third in the production vehicles that Land Cruiser, going very well. There's Tom Swift, second in the class at the moment behind Bahrain. He's won everything before him this year. And uh, there's Marius Bahrain. He's leading his class, both in those mighty mags. We're just coming up to the service point now. And Gerrit and Vic Kampfer, that's the Quadrature 4x4 insurance, 14-year-old uh, turbocharged Hilux. What a history that's had. And not as uh, Alberts and duty taking that cam cameraman out there, Charles Matisse, the navigator, in that uh, race car. And the only diesel bucky in the race, Jean Jabeer and Errol Hodson, in the Charlotte Freight Toyota, also having a very good run. And this thick bush and sand is certainly going to have an effect on those motorcycles. Hear the different sound. We need more diesels in off-road racing. Very, very effective uh, vehicles. Here's sportsmanship for you, the chef special of uh, Kutsi Labaskakni, and care but taking the problem of Allman's Toyota into the service point. I just hope it's not uh, gearbox troubles that he's having. 250 kilometers behind them in this race. It's getting up to mid-morning there. Sh uh, Shumi Fun Friend, Fani Kutsa. Uh, this whole event has got so many Castrol Toyotas dominating this event. They come to the service point. The DSP, as they call it, designated service point. And here's Variaw and Carolyn arriving from uh, for their first service. Got to find their service crew. You can see that's been set up here in the bush. Wonderful camp there, the 4x4 Club of South African Toyota set up for the overnight stop. It's just 90 k's away from Gaborones, but of course it's at the end of 250 kilometers. Tom Smith, second still on a charge in that single seater. Porsche engine, sounding crisp, little megaphone out of the back. And uh, here's the Chepe. Don't put a wheel wrong, hardly ever get lost. They've had one puncture on the route. It's a sun driving now, France Jr. You can see the red apron around the helmet of Francie Senior sitting there with that air hose going into the helmet. So the dust is really not a problem. And hello, drama. Woolridge has got a puncture in those special Pirelli Dakar uh, tyres. Going to lose him possibly the lead overall and maybe in his class. And you don't realise that just how quick these guys are going. Here's uh, Cliffy Barker flying along there. It's so easy to make a mistake here. And behind him, just behind him, long, about 140, 150 k's an hour, Hoppy Ranica and Robin Houghton, his navigator. What a successful team these two have been. One of the most uh, successful crews in uh, off-road racing. And behind him, hello, hello, Greg Harvey and Boyd Stone have moved up. Still lots of thick sand and dust, but they are really trucking along there. Getting into the loop now, Cassie could see Pete Swanepoel. They're third in the production vehicle class at the moment behind the Birkins. And also Jubei in that diesel Toyota, which is putting up a very good performance. Four hours are gone, 500 kilometers completed as they finish the loop to the, the Chepex. Sounding great there. They can see those markers once again. That's how they find their way through the top. As he comes to the marshalling point here at the end of the first day, here's the overall leader. France Junior driving and looking very good for a win. As Woolrich comes in, not too far back in second position, a lot more comfort with windscreens. The aircon, of course, as we said, has gone out of that one. Go, guys. No, I find, eh? We had a puncher about 20 k's back, otherwise we were right with Chepik. We were, we were right behind him. We had a puncher. Lost a couple of minutes. So happy in second, eh? Yeah, happy, yeah. So this could be a big race tomorrow as in comes Cliffy Barker. Third, this is the best performance he's had this year. First in his class there at the moment, ahead of RP, third overall in the race. Nicely turned out that fiberglass at the back of that uh, the back of that bucket. And here's the results after day one, 500 kilometers. Francie Chepik's the overall leader, ahead of Rob Walk, we haven't seen too much of him. Greg Harvey and Boy Stone are next, with Varyav and Carolyn doing very well. And Woolridge, as you've seen, leading the production vehicle class ahead of Cliffy Barker and RP Rainick and uh, Sumi van Feren, they're in fourth. Right, it's day two, Sunday morning, it's early, it's seven o'clock, and then this time now, they're going to start in their positions they finished on the road, and also on the uh, the difference in time that they finished. So off we go, does uh, 
the uh, Chepex, also goes Woolridge, and here's Cliffy Barker now, and behind him, in those few seconds, there he is. This is going to be a fight to the finish. They're going to do a, this 250-kilometer loop in the opposite direction, and then they're going to head 250 k's down back to Gaborones. And this entire village, as you can see, erected in the bush, the whole atmosphere of long-distance off-road racing. South African certainly in off-road races in particular know how to do it in style. They've been working in cars, they've been partying, they've been having a wonderful time out here in Botswana. Rob Walk in the single-seater, looking good to finish in the top six, big motor at the back of that one. He's just 14 minutes by the Chebex at the moment, finished in the Lichtenberg 400. Lots of talk to get through that thick sand. This loop's not too bad, there's more bush than anything else. You can see those markers say turn right. The Birkins, they lead by 17 minutes in that class here, that standard production 4x4 class in that Castrol Toyota. Second in their class, Shumi van Fur and Fani Kutsa on those Conti tires, as we say. They've got just behind Woolridge and Farrock, not too far behind. And here's Alfred, the quadrature 4x4 Toyota. That's the uh, one that's done so well over the last 14 years. And because you could see, Pete in the dust, now they're difficult to find out which way to go. They're 31 seconds behind Shumi. And this course a lot more difficult in the opposite direction. It's all been chowed up. They're going the opposite direction on the loop. As we start heading back for Botswana, also difficult. There's lots of tracks and it's been uh, ploughed up there for these competitors. I'll be at the end of the loop now. They're coming in for their service point and then they're on their way back to Gaborones. It's mid-morning. They'll be finished by lunchtime, that's for sure. Looks for his pit and here they go. A professional team gets into action here. One, two, three. They'll be back on the road. Cliff Barker's hurrying along. He's third on the road. Sounding good, that M3 BMW, 20,000 rands with the M3 BMW, trying to get the Chepix back in the road, some spectators have got in the way, they say, please get back, here we go, and those big tyres at the back just dig in there, and they're on the way back to Gabs, 250 k's, and another win possibly, Arby Reinecke, flying along, second on the road, first in his class, battling a little bit in the sand as they stop here, Shumi van Furen, they get away from the pits as well, well serviced now, got a full tank of gas, they might have only had two-wheel drive. They've done a great job here, the Birkins, as they start heading back for Gabs over the Let the Kong uh, Moli Paloli Road. They're on their way for a win. It's a great performance. They're about two-wheel drive and Mark Corbett and Juan Moore certainly racing that race car. They are giving a big cent. Fourth in the special vehicle category at the moment. No down talk, that's what you need in off-road racing. As they get back into the bush, it's, uh, it's a lot of bush there. And uh, here's the sort of country we go for in the lead there. You see... Uh, you see Mark Corbett, John Moore, and just behind them, Cassie could see it's uh, Pete Swanepoel hurrying along there. It's a nice, easy track now. They're navigating, navigating and sit back for a little while. Probably getting close to the finish now. Neil Woolridge looking so good. Oh, it's so comfortable to do off-road racing, but you forget just how quick these guys are. Tom Smith hasn't been beaten this year. That mighty man. Porsche engine, oh, he does go that car, does never brakes, it just gets on, he's got to navigate himself, all out there on his own single-seater. And Cliffy Barker, well, this has been a great run for him. Now, all that hard work they've been putting into this vehicle certainly has been paying off there. And uh, they're right on track there and sounding good, looking good. As um, Cassie could see, Pete Swanepoel bouncing the way. There's that thick sand back again as we get near to the finish. Very hard, you can imagine those engines are really struggling here. And uh, the men likely to win this event, they haven't got far to go. thousand kilometres under the belt. And uh, this is going to be their fourth win of the season. And R.P. Reinecke. Just listen to the big power, that four and a half litre Land Cruiser. A real solid vehicle, if ever there was one. Hasn't missed a beat. And uh, Toyota put their money where their mouth is and certainly they support this off-road racing in a big way. And from Botswana, still hurrying, he knows this country well. He can run so fast as a dog chasing you on the right-hand side. Flat out there, he's doing 100, 120 k's an hour. You go off here, take trees out, and you really do a lot of damage to the suspension. Few punctures, not as many as we've had on some of the other events. That's uh, the bad man from Botswana, that Chumi van Vieren, well named. Greg Harvey, Boy Stone, and the uh, Jimco, that cat's called Jimco. They're going for second spot behind the Chepix. And Cliff Weigelt and Jan Smallberg, third in the super truck class. And uh, as we get to the finish, just a few hundred metres to go, he's got his fourth win of the season. Motor sounding as healthy as ever, and this Chepic team has done so well once again. Hat tricker wins there in the Toyota 1000 for the Chepics. Well, the second day was started off very great. This morning it started at seven o'clock, and uh, we had a seven-minute lead. So we got out there, and we doubled that lead by the time we got back to the overnight stop. It's on a 250-kilometer loop. 
we got another five minutes. So that gave us a nice comfortable lead to, to come home with, even with a puncture or whatever, we knew that we could make a good plan and come in ahead of everybody. Coming in for their sixth win in the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, Robert Houghton, the navigator, very successful team, and Oppi Ranika, the driver. We have a very good run to go. We have no problem. We have 40 kilos to the beginning of the morning to the Zero in the Rai and to go to the Neda and to Cliff Bakker. And that's why it was not all that good for us. That's been quite a race, and he's going to be happy coming home there third on the road there. Cliffy Bock and winning his class as well, the Mitsubishi Pajero, the Reparel Gel one of Woolridge and Paul Vermark. And the Birkins didn't think they're going to finish at all. And here they win their class. Very good performance with two wheel drive in that castle together. So the Chepix are the overall winners. Hard combination to beat. That's a senior and junior. Shared the driving. Very on. And Carolyn went well in coming home in third position overall in their class. RP Rainick and Robin Houghton won. So did Neil Woolridge winning their class there with Paul Vermark. And Shumi Van Fern did well with Fani Kotza. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race was proudly brought to you by Toyota.